Le Président du débat, le honorable member pour Prince Edward Hastings. Merci. Merci, M. le Speaker. Je suis pleased de rise aujourd'hui pour parler de la Bill C-44, la protection du Canada du Terrorist Act. This legislation makes important changes to modernize the CSIS Act, as well as to bring into force provisions related to revoking the citizenship of terrorists and those who take up arms against the Canadian Armed Forces. Our government has a strong record of action on protecting Canada's national security. We have given law enforcement new tools by making it a crime to go overseas to engage in terrorist activity. We have given authorities tools to strip Canadian citizenship from those engaged in terrorist activities. We have increased the funding for our national security agencies, such as the RCMP and CSIS, by a third. We introduced new measures to allow our national security agencies to better track threats to Canada. However, it is clear that there is still much more work to be done. This past Sunday, of course, we all saw a video released of more than a dozen men being beheaded by ISIL terrorists, including the American aid worker Peter Kassig. His parents said that they were heartbroken to learn that their son had lost his life as a result of his love for the Syrian people and his desire to ease their suffering. So as Canadians, of course, we all in this House and across this country condemn these barbaric actions in the strongest possible terms. In addition to the horrific reports from Iraq and Syria, recent horrific terrorist acts right here at home, as we all know, have been and are a stark reminder that ISIL is a threat to Canadians. That's why we're taking part in the coalition that is currently conducting airstrikes against ISIL and supporting the security forces in Iraq in their fight against this terrorist scourge. It's also the reason that we're working very determinedly to strengthen the tools available to the police and the Intelligence Committee. The Protection of Canada from Tourist Act is just the first step of our effort to do that. Now, as Chair of Public Safety, I'm certainly pleased to discuss in a little bit more detail some of the key measures, of course, that will appear before the Committee for Evaluation. This bill has several key measures that I would like to discuss then in more detail. First, the authority to investigate threats, collect foreign intelligence within Canada, and provide security assessments. Section 12 of the CSIS Act mandates CSIS to collect and analyze intelligence on threats to the security of Canada and, in relation to those threats, report to and advise the Government of Canada. These threats are defined in the CSIS Act as espionage or sabotage, foreign-influenced activities that are detrimental to the interest of Canada, activities directed towards the threat or use of acts of serious violence, and activities directed towards undermining the system of government in Canada. Now, Section 16 of the CSIS Act authorizes CSIS to collect within Canada foreign intelligence relating to the capabilities, intentions, or activities of any foreign state or group of foreign states subject to the restriction that its activities cannot be directed at Canadian citizens, permanent residents, or corporations. Sections 13, 14, and 15 authorize CSIS to provide security assessments to the Government of Canada, provincial governments, and other Canadian and foreign institutions, provide advice to ministers of the Crown on matters related to the Citizenship Act and Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, and conduct such investigations as may be required to perform these functions. Further, I would like to discuss investigative techniques in more detail. Fulfilling these mandates requires that CSIS use a suite of investigative techniques. These techniques can include, among others, open source research, physical surveillance, interviews, and analyzing intelligence from a variety of sources. Human sources, however, are at the core of CSIS's ability to fulfill its mandate to investigate and advise on threats to the security of Canada. Techniques used by CSIS may include, among others, searches of a target's place of residence, analysis of financial records, or telecommunication intercepts. Now, Section 21 of the CSIS Act authorizes CSIS to apply for a warrant to conduct activities where there are reasonable grounds to believe that a warrant is required to enable CSIS to investigate a threat to the security of Canada or perform its duties and functions pursuant to Section 16 of the CSIS Act. The CSIS Act requires that the Minister of Public Safety approve warrant applications before they are submitted to the federal court. 
cooperation with other domestic agencies is also very important and critical. Section 17 of the CESAS Act authorizes CESA to cooperate with any department of the government of Canada or the government of a province or any police force in a province. CESAS as such works closely with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Canada Border Services Agency and other government departments and police forces across Canada. CESAS cooperation with these entities must be approved by the Minister of Public Safety. In investigating threat-related activities occurring outside of Canada, CESA's relationship with communication and security establishment is particularly important. CESA's relies heavily on its capabilities and its expertise of CESA in order to conduct telecommunications intercept outside of Canada. CSE's legal authority to provide assistance to CESA's stems from section 273.64 bracket 1, bracket C of the National Defence Act. CSIS must obtain a warrant from the Federal Court of Canada to seek assistance from CSC to intercept the telecommunications of a Canadian outside of Canada. As well, we cannot forget the importance of cooperation with foreign intelligence agencies. Fulfilling CSIS mandate also requires that CSIS undertake investigative activities outside of Canada and cooperate and share intelligence with foreign entities. Targets of CSIS investigations often depart Canada to engage in a range of threat-related activities. At the same time, in some cases, threats to the security of Canada develop entirely outside of Canada. CSIS cannot limit itself to only undertaking investigative activities within Canada. Pursuant to Section 17 of the CSIS Act, CSIS may with the approval of the Minister of Public Safety, after consulting with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, enter into an arrangement or otherwise cooperate with the government of a foreign state or an institution thereof. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, in the past, uh, opposition has been less than supportive of measures to keep Canadians safe from terrorists. The NDP voted against making it a criminal offence to travel abroad to engage in terrorism. And the Liberal leader has said that it was, quote, an affront to Canadian values, end of quote, to strip passports from those who may engage in terrorist acts. So, but I am pleased, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased that, uh, to see that all parties in the House here have expressed support for further studying this important bill at committee. I hope that this support continues, and I encourage all members to support these most important measures. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.